Today I'm going to read about Tools for Andy by James S. Tippett. <clears throat> Pictures by K. Draper. Copyrighted 1951. I'm not sure if I'm going to read the whole book today. I might get halfway through because it's a 46 page book. We're going to talk about a hammer, screwdriver, wrench, shovel, saw, pliers, plane, paintbrush, and more tools for Andy. So it's possible when we get around between shovel and saw and pliers, we'll take a little break and continue tomorrow. Hammer. Let's see if you can see. Okay. A hammer is a useful tool for working fast or slow. <clears throat> it can do the lightest tapping or strike a crashing blow. All of the work that hammers do, of all the work the hammers do, who could ever know? We ought to drive nails into the wall of the back hall, Father said. We could hang our coats on them when we come in from work. I know where the nails are, Andy said. And I know where a good hammer is, Father said. Come along and we'll see what we can do. Andy and Father walked across the yard to the shed where Father had his workbench. Andy, st Andy opened the door of the shed and, I'm sorry, Father opened the door of the shed and he and Andy stepped inside. I need to rest my hand. Lying on the workbench or hanging near it were all kinds of tools. There on the workbench Andy saw the hammer. Father picked it up. He smoothed its head and its claws in it with his hand. He lifted the hammer up and down and up and down, feeling its weight. This is a good hammer, he said. It's the best one I ever had. Andy took the hammer while Father found some good strong nails. Andy smoothed the head of the hammer and felt its claws. He lifted the hammer up and down. It was heavy. You carry the hammer, said Father. I'll carry the nails. They walked back to the house. Tap, tap, tap went the hammer in the back hall. There, said Father, there's a place to hang my coat when I come in from work. Tap, tap, tap went the hammer again. There, said Father, there is a place for Mother to hang her coat when she comes in from work. Then Father looked at Andy. Tap, tap, tap went the hammer, lower down on the wall. There, said Andy, there is a place to hang my coat when I come in from work. The screwdriver. A screwdriver serves for tightening screws, for loosening things that you make that you think you may use, even for opening lids if you choose. I couldn't keep house without a screwdriver, Mother said to Andy. She was fastening a screw that had come loose on the screen door. I know how to use a screwdriver, Andy said. Then you can tighten this screw, said Mother. Andy took the handle of the screwdriver in his right hand. He fitted the thin flat end of the screwdriver into the small groove on the head of the screw in the screen door and then he turned, turned, and turned until the screw was tight. Try it, he said to mother, and she did. Tight as I could make it myself, she said. Mother, Andy said, what would you do? If the place on the head of the screw is too small for the thin flat end of your screwdriver to fit into it, I find another screwdriver with an end small enough to fit in the groove on the head of the screw. She said, look here. She opened a drawer and showed Andy her screwdrivers. One big one, one middle sized one, and one small one. I choose the one that fits, she said. You see, I'm prepared. Father has a screwdriver that has little ends that fit into it, Andy told Mother. Big ones and middle-sized ones and small ones. It is in his tool shed. 
he can take the large end out and put a small end in into fit a small groove on the head of the screw. Well, that must be a handy screwdriver, said Mother. It would have, it would save a lot of space. Maybe I'd better buy a newfangled screwdriver for myself. But Mother did not have to buy a newfangled screwdriver for herself. On her birthday, Andy and Father gave her one for a present. That was a very good present for a mother. Actually, also a hammer. Maybe a hammer with flowers on it. I think I'd like one of those for my birthday. Let's talk about the wrench. When a nut sticks tight or a bolt comes loose, a wrench is the tool for a workman to use. A big one, a small one, which would you choose? Drip, 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 went the water in the kitchen sink. It dripped all night and all morning. Drip, drip, drip. We must do something about that dripping, Andy's mother said. She went to the telephone. Hello, she said. Is this Pete the plumber? It is Pete the plumber. And he said that he would come out right away to Andy's house. Oh, Andy said when Pete came into the kitchen, I have a wrench, it's just like yours. What a sweet little picture. Then why don't you stop the water from dripping Pete, the plumber, asked. But when Andy showed him his wrench, Pete said, Oh, now I see why. Your wrench is too small. Pete, the plumber, handed Andy's small wrench back to him. Then Pete went into the basement and turned off the water. The dripping stopped. But my job isn't finished yet, Pete, the plumber, said. If that were the end of my job, the dripping would stop. But you wouldn't have any water in your house. Andy followed Pete back into the kitchen. Pete went to the sink. He took his big wrench in one hand and he tried it on the faucet. Too big, he said. My wrench is too big for the faucet, but I can make it fit. Andy watched Pete turn, turn, turn the screw. The opening in the wrench grew smaller. Pete the plumber tried the wrench on the faucet again. It was just right. He turned the faucet and took it off. He put in a new washer and put the faucet back. Once more, he turned the faucet with the wrench to make the washer hold. Now, said Pete the plumber, we'll see if the drip is stopped. He went into the basement again. Andy went too. Pete and Andy, I'm sorry, Pete held Andy up and let him turn the water on again. Then they hurried back to the kitchen sink. Not a drip of water, not one. Let's make sure the water is on again, said Pete, and he turned the faucet. Swish, swish, splash, splash. The water rushed out of the faucet. Pete turned the faucet again, and the water stopped rushing out, and not a drop of water came dripping, drip, drip. Not one. Pete the plumber and his wrench had done the work. Thank you, said Andy's mother. You're welcome, said Pete the plumber. He looked at Andy just before he closed the kitchen door. You'll soon be big enough to use a big wrench, he said. Then your mother won't need to call a plumber when the water starts to drip. With a wrench of the right size and someone who knows how to use it in every house, plumbers wouldn't have jobs like this to do. Pete the plumber said goodbye and closed the door and went away. This is where I'd like to stop and talk about the activity that I thought of today. I really think that it's important, if you have permission, that when people come to work on things at your house, that you may sit and watch them. You can learn so much from watching. Sometimes people are nice enough to let you ask questions and like Pete the Plumber, to show you what they're doing and to tell you about what they're doing. Several of my sons, enjoyed tagging along when someone was doing electrical or plumbing or uh, working with our furnace, anything. I used to like to watch people put in carpet and linoleum. 
at my parents' house, and then each one of us, just by watching and sometimes asking questions and a little learning on our own, learn how to do many things around the house. I don't think that all of the plumbers should go out of business from not having work because everyone knows how to be a plumber, but it is good know, to know how to do some things around the house. Perhaps you have a mother or father who's really good at doing things around the house and working with their hands. Then you have a real treasure and you should really watch what they do. Okay, back to our tools. If you hold a shovel tightly by its handle in your hand, you can move a pile of cinders or a wagon load of sand. You can even dig out bushes from places where they stand. Yes, said father, we're going to dig the post holes and set the posts for the picket fence this afternoon. How can we dig post holes, Andy asked. With my long handled shovel, father said. Oh, Andy said, I have a shovel too, I'll bring it. Father nodded, you bring your shovel and I'll get mine, and the posts too. Father went away whistling. Andy went away whistling. He got his shovel back, mm, sorry. He got his shovel from the back hall and carried it to the place where the holes would be. And Andy's dog Sniffer went along with him. Father had the posts all ready when Andy got there with his shovel. They were laid out where the holes would be. Father was a fast worker. Well, 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 Sniffer, Father said. Have you come to help us dig post holes? Sniffer didn't say a word, but he followed Father and Andy when they went to put the stake where the first post hole would be. Now we'll see how the shovel works for digging post holes, said Father. First he marked with his shovel around the stake where the hole was to be. After that he took the stake out, and then he began to dig. Sniffer was right behind him, and Andy was right in front of him. When the dirt was loose, Father threw it out of the hole with the shovel. Now he asked Andy, Do you see how to dig post holes? But before Andy could say yes, Sniffer jumped into the hole and began to dig as fast as he could. He made the dirt fly. Well, it's too bad I don't have paws like Sniffer, said Father. Then I wouldn't need a shovel. But he made Sniffer get away from the post holes. He wanted to dig all the holes and set the post that afternoon. Down went the shovel. Huh, said Father. Then he shoveled the dirt out. Down, down, down he dug. Andy began to dig a post hole with his shovel, too. But he didn't dig as fast as Father. When he went over to see the post hole that Father was digging, it looked very deep. Andy jumped into the hole. It was halfway up to his neck. And that's deep enough, Father said. Mother came out with her little camera and she took a picture of Father and Andy and Sniffer digging post holes. Andy held each post while Father filled the earth in around it. And Andy helped Father pack the earth down around the posts. At last all the posts were set into the holes and the earth was packed around them. We can put up the pickets for the fence tomorrow, Father said. He put his shovel over his shoulder and went to the tool shed. Sniffer went along with Andy to the back hall where Andy kept his small shovel. The saw. The shining saw goes back and forth with ringing singing sound. Beneath its teeth the sawdust makes a slowly grow growing mound. Oh, isn't that true? I will carry the boards, said Father, and you can carry the saw. It's sharp, you know. Don't let it cut you, and don't let it hit against anything. Father picked up some long boards and lifted them to his shoulder. Andy carried the saw in his hand. Off they marched to the place where they were going to build the picket fence. Father put down the boards beside the posts he had set up. Wait here, he told Andy. I'll bring the horses. Horses, asked Andy. Do we need horses to help build a picket fence? We don't have any horses. Wait a minute and you'll see them right here, said Father. And away he started for the tool shed laughing. When he came back, he was carrying something on his shoulder. 
Where are the horses? Andy asked him. Here they are, father said. He lowered two wooden things from his shoulders to the ground. This is the kind of horse a builder uses. Andy could see that they did look like horses, but father did not ride them. He set them on the ground and laid one of the long boards across them. Then he took the sharp, shiny saw, shiny saw in his right hand. He held the board with his left hand. Zim, zim, that sharp saw. Zim, zim, said the shine, shiny saw. A picket was ready for the new fence. Zim, zim, the sharp saw. Zim, zim, said the shiny saw. Another picket was ready. Andy placed the pickets in a pile, and the pile grew higher and higher. Hang on. Sorry about that. Did you want to saw some pickets? Father asked Andy. Andy took the sharp, shiny, shiny, uh, I think I already read that. <laughs> Did I already read that? Sorry about that. My phone was ringing. Okay. Do you want to saw some pickets? Father asked Andy. Andy took the sharp, shiny saw in his right hand. Father held the board while Andy sawed. Zip, zip, went th the saw said. <laughs> zip, zip, zip. Father had to show Andy how to keep the saw straight. Never try to saw too fast. He said, keep your saw shiny, and it keeps its teeth sharp. Then you can make it say, zip, zim, zip, zim for you. Sometimes Andy held the board while father made the saw say zip zim, and sometimes Andy piled the pickets. Sniffer did not come near. He did not like the sound of the saw. When all the pickets for the fence had been sawed, father said, thank you, Andy. You and I and the two horses have helped this sharp, shiny saw do a good job. <laughs> Andy agreed with father and then they finished the picket fence. That's another good job, Father said, and Andy agreed with him. Okay, I'm stopping this book for a second to say, can you say sharp, shiny saw? Oh my goodness, that was not easy to say. Sharp, shiny saw. If you say it 10 times fast, I don't know what's going to come out of your mouth, and I'm certainly not gonna try it, but you can try that. You can even hit pause on the video to try to say sharp, shiny saw, pliers. I don't think I'm gonna stop this book in the middle. It's going very fast. All pliers have strong jaws that open and close and pliers hold fast as anyone knows. A workman takes pliers wherever he goes. Your father? likes the picture I took of you and him and Sniffer digging the post holes for the picket fence, Mother said to Andy. I have found a frame that fits it. What will you do with it? Andy asked. Hang it in your father's tool shed, Mother said. It will be a surprise for him when he comes home from work. Andy looked at the frame. It was lying face down on the kitchen table. He saw the back of the frame. He saw the two screw eyes and a roll of wire. He could not see the picture of father in him and Sniffer digging the post holes, but he knew what it would look like. I have everything ready, but my pliers. Mother said, I need my pliers to turn the screw eyes into the back of the frame and to twist the wire after I cut it. I'll get your pliers for you, Andy said. They're in the box where I keep my screwdriver, Mother told Andy. Andy opened the box and looked for the pliers. They aren't here, Mother said. Mother looked in the toolbox. She could not find the pliers either. Oh, I remember now, she said. Your father took them the other afternoon. I suppose they're in the tool shed. Then we can't get them, Andy said. Father never leaves his tool shed unlocked. When he goes away, Mother nodded. I know, said Andy. 
We could use my toy pliers. They don't cut wire the way yours do, but I can twist the wire and turn the screws with them. So it looks like mother's cutting the wire with some scissors. That's gonna be awfully hard on the scissors. But they're being resourceful. Sometimes you can turn a screw eye by putting a small screwdriver in it and turning that around and around as if you are winding the dial on a game or um, the spinner on a game. But you can see this set of pliers looks like they have a wire cutter in them. Okay, back to our story. I can cut the wire with an old pair of scissors, Mother said. I'll do it while you get the pliers. Andy came back with his toy pliers. Mother was having a hard time cutting the wire with the old pair of scissors. If my pliers had a place for cutting wire on them, you wouldn't need yours, Andy said to her. I think I won't need them anyhow, Mother said. She showed Andy that the old scissors had finally cut the wire. Then she took Andy's toy pliers <clears throat> and started the screw into the wood of the frame. Turn, turn, turn. The toy pliers tightened the screw eyes on both side of the frame, sides of the frame. Then mother put the wire through the eye screws. She twisted the ends with the pliers. She held up the frame by the wire. Now Andy could see the picture of father and Sniffer and him digging post holes. There, said mother. Father will like it better than ever when we hang it in his tool shed. I'll tell him that you that he has your pliers there, Andy said. We can't use tools if they're locked up in a tool shed. <laughs> I wonder how they got the picture into the tool shed if the tool shed was locked. I wonder if we're going to find about, out about that later in the book. The plane. Shoof goes the plane and a shaving is cut and the plane slides over its tracks. Shoof goes the plane and the shavings curl while the plane slides back and forth or while, while the plane slides forward and back. Father stood at the workbench. He took up a board. He felt its sides. He felt its edges. The board was rough. Father put it on the workbench and he watched him. Then father took his shiny plane. He rubbed his hand over the shiny surface. He felt the sharp edge of its blade very carefully. He held its handle in his right hand. With his left hand, he held the little knob on top of the plane. He put the shiny plane on the rough board. Father pulled his plane forward with his right hand. Push, push, push. The plane went forward. Pull, pull, pull. It came back. Shoof, shoof. Shoof, went the tiny plane until the rough board was smooth. Curl, curl, curl came the shavings to the floor. The floor was covered with them. Father's feet were covered with them too. Then father put his shiny plane down on his workbench again. He took the board in his hands and he felt its sides. He felt its edges. He nodded his head. Yes, the board was smooth. Father kicked the shavings away with his foot and he took up another board. He put it on his workbench and he pushed the shiny plane forward and pulled it back. He felt the board and made it all smooth. The shavings curled around his feet. His shiny plane went shoof, shoof, shoof. Then Father said, who wants these shavings? And he looked around at Andy. I do, said Andy. Well, then you may have them, Father said. Andy picked up the curly shavings, the curliest one he put on top of his head. Look, Father, he said, I'm growing curls. Paintbrush. Dip a paintbrush into paint, lift it out, and then use the brush to smooth the paint. Smooth the paint and then dip the brush into the paint and lift and smooth again. The garage was finished. All the boards were straight, clean, and new. They smelled good. But if it rains before these new boards are painted, they won't be straight anymore, said Andy's father. They'll go twisty-turny, crookety-crocky, and our new garage will go twisty-turny, crookety-crockety, too. Then why don't you paint it, said Mother. 
We will, said Father. We must get busy this very minute. Father put on his overalls, and he put on overalls too. Father opened a bucket of fresh paint. He stirred this way, and he stirred that way. Round and round he stirred until the good white paint was mixed and smooth. Father poured some of the paint from his big bucket into Andy's little bucket. All right, he said, here's your brush. And he gave Andy a brush not as big as the one he had. Then father took up his big brush and he felt the bristles of the brush on the palm of his hand. He bent them and flipped them. He said they were all right. Is my brush all right too, Andy asked. Try it and see, said father. So Andy felt the bristles of his brush on the palm of his hand. He bent them and he flipped them and he said that they were all right. Father stood a ladder against the garage. He climbed to the top of it with his paint and his paintbrush. He hung his bucket of paint on the top rung of the ladder and he took the handle of his brush in his right hand. He dipped the bristles of his brush into the bucket into his bucket of paint. His hand went up and down. He dipped and smoothed, he dipped and smoothed, and the wall of the new garage grew white. Andy watched his father for a while, and then he said, Watch me. Andy set his bucket of paint on the ground near the garage. He dipped the bristles of his paintbrush into his paint. His right hand went up and down. He dipped, he smoothed, he dipped, he smoothed, and that part of the, garage, the wall grew white. Father held his paintbrush in his hand, and he watched Andy paint. He nodded his head yes and said, You're all right. You know how to hold a paintbrush when you paint. You don't scrub it around and around. You smooth the paint with it. Go ahead. So Andy and his father painted the garage. When all the straight new boards had been covered with paint, father and Andy cleaned their paintbrushes and put them away. They cleaned their hands and went to look at the garage. Mother came out of the house to look at it. She said, that garage is so smooth and white, it almost hurts my eyes to look at it. Father looked at Andy and said, our good paintbrushes did it. We just did that at my house. My third son and my husband painted the side of our garage and it did look striking white. Here's the last section, more tools for Andy. Andy was awake early on the morning of his birthday, but father and mother were awake earlier. Happy birthday, they called. Here, Andy, mother said, this key is part of your birth our birthday present to you. It unlocks this box, father said. Andy saw the box. The box was long and flat, painted in colors he liked. On top of the box was printed, tools for Andy. Oh, Andy said, and he unlocked the box with the key that mother had handed him. Oh, 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 he said. And Andy took eight packages out of the toolbox. He unwrapped the first package. There was a pair of pliers with a place for cutting wire. He unwrapped the second package and took out a screwdriver with a handle and many different sized ends. The third package held a hammer with a head that was a magnet. The fourth package held a small plane. In the next two packages were different sized saws. The seventh package held some middle-sized paintbrushes. And out of the last package came a wrench that was almost as big as Pete's wrench. Andy laid the new tools one by one in the painted toolbox with his name on it. Thank you, thank you, he said to father and mother. Thank you for my new tools. Thank you a million times. Now I will be a workman like father and Pete. Now I can help do all kinds of work. The end.